Pitch Immersive is a classic eventide pitch effect for adding spatial depth and richness to your music. At the current time of release, Eventide Immersive plugins support multi-channel formats from left, center, right, up to 7.1.4. Let's take a look at setting up Logic Pro for spatial audio. When creating a new project in Logic Pro, you can enable spatial audio and set the surround format directly from the new project chooser. If you're working within an existing stereo project, you can go under the file menu in project settings and audio, and then from here, you can enable spatial audio and choose your surround format in order to convert a stereo project to Dolby Atmos. In the audio preferences on the IO assignments tab, you can assign the different locations in your surround configuration to the physical outputs on your audio hardware. Now, when you're working with InLogic and Dolby Atmos, tracks can be routed either to a surround bed, in which case they're outputting to surround, and they use a surround panner where you can pan to any of the locations, depending on the configuration you've chosen for your surround setup, or they can be configured as 3D object panner tracks where we use a discrete panner that allows you to pan front, left, right, top, bottom, anywhere in between to get your individual object tracks placed wherever you want specifically. Now, Logic will automatically enable a Dolby Atmos renderer plugin on the master output, and it's a good idea to move this down a couple of slots because what happens is the surround bed arrives at the master channel before the Atmos, where it gets upmixed to Dolby Atmos, and then the plugins after will monitor the Atmos signal. Now, in this plugin window, you can choose your monitoring format here if you're monitoring with multiple speaker configuration, or choose one of the binaural formats if you're monitoring through headphones. Here I've got Micro Pitch Immersive on a stereo female vocal track. Now, Micro Pitch Immersive will automatically upmix the input source to match the output configuration. So here, we have a three-way switch, and on the input, you can see the stereo left-right inputs, and on the output, we see all the multi-channel destinations the audio is routed to. And on this third tab, we can customize the mix of how much is being sent to each of the speakers. Now, by default, the sections are linked so we can adjust, let's say, left, center, right all together. And for the surround sides, we can adjust left and right together, surround, rear, left and right together. Or we can unlink, and when they're unlinked, we can adjust the left and right separately for each of these channels. And I'm just going to option click to bring these all back to their default. Now, the low frequency effects channel is by default excluded from the signal path when upmixing like this. If the input format doesn't contain any LFE information, and this stereo vocal doesn't, then the LFE channel's output will be silent. However, if the input source, let's say, is a surround track with LFE, then, of course, it'll get routed through here, and we can mute it or adjust the level as we can any of the other channels. Now, I'm going to start with a vocal and set up a kind of classic detuning effect. We have a mix knob. Let's start by turning this on. I'll dial it up so we can really hear the effect. We can detune the left and right based on this amount over here, and then the front and rear based on whatever amount we set there, and then the top and main detuned by this amount. And these pitch offsets work in conjunction with the delay settings here. The delay can be either synced to tempo, adjusted manually, or left off. And we have a pre-delay to delay the onset of this pitch shifting, and then a delay loop for how much delay is going to be used before the signal is fed back in and repeated based on the amount of feedback that we have set here. And then we have cross feed to mix left into right and right into left to kind of get each of the sides fed to the other for a nice, thicker, lusher effect. So I'll use a fairly quick pre-delay. So it's more like reverb-like with a longer time here, kind of like a slap delay. or I can sync it to tempo. But I'm going to leave it nice and loose. Maybe something like this. We can feed more of it back in. Again, to get more of a reverb effect. And cross-feeding left to right on each of these pairs of channels. Now, we also have a tilt function. And you'll see what this does is it weights the detuning 
from one side to the other, and you can see the result in the field here, and you can often click to reset. And you can do the same for each of these. Let's add a bit of reverb. And then just dial in the amount we want. Here I've got a lovely detune tempo synced delay on the roads. The feedback loop is set for a dotted eighth and the pre delay for an eighth note, and some nice subtle detuning. Here it is unaffected. Now we can use the morph slider to modulate any of the parameters and it's an interesting way to get some of the pitch shifting moving from side to side. In addition to the tilt function, we can use this and automate it in our DAW. I'm gonna set this to opposite values. And then we can automate this or manually control it to move the pitch shifting around between the different positions. Now we can have the delay loop feedback in here in three different modes. When it's set to self, the echoes will stay in their original spatial positions. However, here, the echoes will rotate counterclockwise on each repeat through the loop. And here they'll rotate clockwise. Now another way to modulate the pitch offsets is using the modulation control. Here, I'm gonna dial up the mix full so we can hear the effect. So here the pitch is moving at this speed. We can go faster or slower. And at this depth, and when we go above 100%, we're going through zero so it modulates beyond the values here. And we can have the LFO take different shapes. We can go with a smoother sine wave. So very smooth or more angular square wave. Triangle, again faster or slower. Saw up or down, or it ramps up and then goes straight down or random, and then blend it to taste. Here I've got a tempo synced delay on drums with some dramatic detuning, which is fine because they're not pitched. And we have a three band EQ here. We can operate on the front pair, top pair, or rear pair separately or affect all together and they're color coded. So maybe in the front, I wanna have a dip there and maybe a boost there. And we can use the shift key to adjust the cue directly from the plot here, in addition to getting the individual controls for each band over here. And we can change the shape for the top and low band between shelf and a cut. So maybe I want something like that for the front. Maybe for the top, I wanna compensate and bring up the low end because they're off the ground. So the idea is that you can EQ each separately and we can use command for precision fine increments and that's control on windows. And we can reset by option clicking. And when we're in all mode, we can double click to join all together and have them all meet up at that, let's say that value there, for example, and that one there. So maybe I wanna filter the delays here. 